battle had raged for 20 hours in the heart of the Afghan capital. U.S. and NATO forces were heavily involved as the American embassy and NATO compounds were being targeted. Officials said only a handful of assailants had taken over a half-built building in the downtown area but maintained their positions despite being vastly outnumbered. The fighting didn't finish till Wednesday when Afghan police ferreted out and killed the remaining two or three attackers backed up by a final volley of helicopter gunfire. Once it was over, teams brought one body out on a blanket and loaded it into the back of a pickup. They found a few more inside once they climbed the 11-story structure alongside water bottles and dried fruit that showed the men had planned for a long fight. The bodies were fingerprinted before they were taken away. The shooting from the building had been just one facet of a coordinated attack on several Kabul neighborhoods. Suicide bombings were attempted elsewhere, but the would-be perpetrators were killed. Interior Ministry spokesman Sadiq Siddiqui. There were uh, four attacks on Kabul city, in which nine terrorists participated in these attacks. Six of them were in this building. Um, they started the attack on this building yesterday at 2 o'clock and uh, our police was able to um, kill them, all six of them, today. U.S. Ambassador Ryan Crocker tried to downplay the incident, which he blamed on a group called the Haqqani Network, affiliated with the Taliban and al-Qaeda. You, you can't keep every evildoer out of the city when you do have an insurgency that's going on in the country. It's particularly hard to do uh, when they have safe havens. Still, despite the ambassador's words and the applause when the fighting finally ended, the violence does raise fresh doubts about the Afghan government's ability to maintain security, and it carries an unsettling message about the resilience and reach of militant groups in Afghanistan. Karen Sloan, The Associated Press.